the theorists of uh, the principles of uh, jurisprudence, the usuliyin. And all of this, uh, we have not even yet started mentioning the practice. The practice, you know, like Sayyidina Imam uh, Dawood al-Ta'i, one of the great distinguished students of Imam Abu Hanifa, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, uh, and uh, he once said, now, now that uh, we have finished with, with the last chapter of all of the chapters and sub-chapters and headings of jurisprudence, what remains, oh, our teacher? And Abu Hanifa said, now remains its practice. And then uh, Dawood al-Ta'i said, I was telling myself that now I want to leave all this and go and just spend the rest of my life worshipping my Lord. But then he said, I decided to delay it for one more year. So for one more year, he continued now uh, teaching and studying and fiqh and so forth. But after that, he became a complete devotee, uh, which even, you know, would uh, impress even Sufyan al-Thawri, made him shake in his boots as to the meaning of zuhud, to what extent zuhud meaning the ascetic life or simple life, simple living, and complete relying, reliance on Allah to an extent that, uh, you know, of the caliber of, uh, of uh, Waisal al-Qarani or, or, or so, you know, if it can be compared. But not something that Sufyan al-Thawri himself could bear with, although he was one who, who would fast and pray and so forth until, in his own words, he might urinate blood even from how much depri deprivation he would endure for the sake of uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or people who made the uh, khatma of Qur'an, uh, 60 khatmas in Ramadan and 30 khatmas a month in normal times and would fast every day, like Imam al-Shafi'i did, uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, the whom they call al-watad, the, the, color, uh, the, the column or pillar, because he would spend hours on end standing in prayer. So, um, such were uh, the lives of those who codified also the, uh, the hadith. I mean, Imam Bukhari, for example, a famous story that to the point that they, he would lose his, his sh he would have to sell his shirt in order to survive or eat grass even at one point. He was seen eating grass at one point because they sacrificed everything for the sake of uh, hadith. Just as Abu Huraira, for example, radiallahu anhu, he, he said, uh, at time I would faint of hunger. They would think that I have something uh, else uh, that was making me uh, act like this. But it was just, just hunger, hunger, because I did not want to miss a moment with, with the Prophet ﷺ. That was in the last four years uh, of the Prophet's life, ﷺ, uh, that's when Abu Huraira met up with him. And, uh, and one of those years, Abu Huraira had to spend in Bahrain on mission from the Prophet ﷺ. So it was only three years, the total. But it was three very intensive years. Yeah, uh, hence the high number of hadiths Abu Huraira narrates. And were it not for the fact that uh, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, another Sahabi, uh, also preferred retirement, like Dawud Ta'i, we said, he preferred retirement from life just for the sake of worship. Were it not for that, he would be the one that narrates even more than Abu Huraira, uh, according to Abu Huraira's own estimation, because uh, he kept notes, uh, he kept a record of everything. Uh, 